This week I'm making a simple, modern DIY sofa using only 2x4s and 3 power tools. A miter saw, a drill, and a sander. I started this project by picking out 16 of the straightest 2x4s I could find at Home Depot. Back in my shop I went through the stack picking out the best boards and deciding which side I wanted exposed on that finished piece. First up, I need to set my miter saw angle to 15 degrees and I'll leave it here for all but a few of the final cuts. Now I'm starting here with the seat stretcher pieces. These are trapezoid shape, meaning the angles slope inward at both ends towards the middle as you see here. I'll measure the first one to 58 inches and then use this as a template for the other eight seat stretcher pieces that I need to cut. Then I can use that first piece to mark the line before cutting and then measure against it after the cut. With this method, it's okay if you're off on your first measurement slightly, so long as they all come out the exact same length. Okay, with nine of those stretchers cut, I can move on to the uprights that are gonna form the legs and the armrest. These pieces are parallelograms, meaning the angle on each end matches directions. I set up a stop block here to get repeatable cuts, and I'll make sure to put all the measurements in a full build article that's linked down below. The last pieces I need to batch out for the sofa are the two spacers, these parallelogram pieces and these rectangular pieces. I'll cut both using this same pencil mark that I made on my miter saw at about four and a half inches. Okay, with all 53 pieces needed for this sofa cut, it's best to first sand and apply finish now because I won't be able to get to all the places I need to once I start assembling. For finish, I brushed on two coats of natural Danish oil, and again, I'll have all the materials needed for this sofa linked down in that build article below. On to assembly, and I think this first stack of pieces is the most important to get lined up. You can see here how I use the edge of my workbench and this scrap block to ensure the armrests are splaying outward at 15 degrees and square to the floor. Now, I intentionally made the armrest spacers the same height needed for the seat stretchers up from the bottom, so I could then use those as templates during assembly. And here's a quick diagram so you have a better idea of how this all goes together layer by layer. It's pretty simple and everything is covered in detail in that build article. So this entire sofa is held together with just two inch screws and I use three at each connection. Now I'll admit, I was concerned initially that this would provide enough support with the way the armrests play outward, but just using screws ended up making the sofa rock solid. One thing to note is I alternated the pattern of the three screws on each layer to avoid the screws from running into each other, like so. I think the key to this sofa turning out is taking your time during the assembly process. Now this is a project you can easily build in just a weekend, but this is where it's extra important to get everything lining up right. Also note, I'm pre-drilling the holes and using a countersink bit. This is important to prevent the boards from splitting since I'm driving in screws so close to the edge. From here on, it was rinse and repeat with each layer. And while I work, I like to throw in my headphones and listen to an audiobook from Audible, who's the sponsor of today's video. Now, as you know, Audible has been a longtime supporter of this channel, and I like to highlight for you all the products that I love and use on a regular basis. What's exciting is Audible is so much more than audiobooks. Sure, when you sign up, you'll get a credit from a huge selection of thousands of audiobooks, plus two Audible originals each month. But you'll also get access to daily news digests, podcasts, and even stuff like guided meditations. All of this is available offline, anytime, anywhere. To get started, just go to audible.com slash johnnybuilds or text johnnybuilds to 500-500. Now, working long hours in the shop can get tedious, but I like to pass the time catching up on audiobooks I wouldn't normally have a chance to otherwise. It's like getting the gift of found time in the shop to keep my mind stimulated while my hands are working. Now, something you may not know about me is I'm actually a full-time police detective when I'm not working in the shop. I just listened to the audiobook Mindhunter by John Douglas, and if you're at all into 
true crime, I cannot recommend this book enough. John Douglas pioneered the field of psychological criminal profiling during his 25 year career in the FBI. And it's so fascinating to hear how they would use these techniques to catch serial killers. Now, if you want a title you won't be able to stop listening to, trust me, this is the one. Again, to get started with Audible, go to audible.com slash johnnybuilds or text johnnybuilds to 500, 500 Okay, now it's time to assemble that last layer. I don't want any visible screws, so on that last layer, I'm gonna first pre-drill my holes with a 3 8 inch bit, and then I'll plug those holes with a 3 8 inch dowel. I used a flush trim saw to cut off the dowels and then sanded them smooth off camera. The last two pieces are these back stretchers and they provide support for the cushions. I'm just eyeballing the placement of that lower support and cutting it to fit. The top back support sits flush with the top of the armrest. I cut the first side and held it in place to mark where I needed to make that second cut. Before attaching, I sanded and added more Danish oil as a finish. To attach these, I'm gonna first drill a hole inset an inch and a half from the end. I'm using the same 3 8 inch bit and I first drilled straight down before rotating the bit to about a 30 degree angle and then drilling a pocket for the screws. Essentially, I'm creating my own pocket holes. Last, these back supports get attached and the screw holes get plugged with more 3 8 inch dowels and then I'll cut those flush and sand them. Once I add the cushions, this sofa was complete. So these cushions I picked up from Pier 1 and I'll link the ones that I use down below as well as some other options. This couch can function as an indoor or an outdoor sofa and it's super easy and inexpensive to build in just a weekend. I spent about $70 in materials not counting those cushions and with the cushions you can spend a lot for the nicer ones. You can either make some yourself or you can even pick some up used off of something like Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace. Just make sure to check out that build article link below for step-by-step -step instructions on building this piece. Also make sure you get subscribed to keep up with all my upcoming projects and I've got a playlist queued up right here of more of my DIY build projects. As always, I make these videos available on YouTube and these plans to accompany the builds for free. If you're interested in supporting this channel and learning all about the perks that come along with that, check out my Patreon page link below. And I'd like to thank my Patreon supporters, especially my top patrons, Matt Varighese, David Britton, DFM Toolworks, Maker's Best Friend, and Lex the Historian.